It's a bouquet making sash. It's a book sash. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I'm making my CSA bouquets today. Now today is week two of a five week summer bouquet subscription. Basically customers pay in advance to get five weeks of fresh flowers and I'm here on the porch today to make these bouquets and I thought I'd bring you guys along. First we'll go over the ingredients and a lot of them are the same from last week but we do have some new ones in the mix today. I like to bring in new things for my customers every week so every time they get their bouquet there's something different. I'm gonna start here and go around the circle and there's also a table right here in front of me that's also covered in flowers. So let's start here. We have a beautiful selection of Rubecchia. There are multiple varieties in here. I have some Prairie Sun, uh, but mostly this is Goldilocks and it's absolutely stunning and I love it. And it adds such a bright pop of sunshine into the bouquets. And then guys, I have more gladiolas, more gladiolas than I had last week. I only had a few. They're really starting to come on this year and I accidentally planted them about three weeks later than usual. So I am not surprised that it took me a little bit longer to get gladiolas this year. I grow a commercial mix with a whole bunch of different colors, but I also knew this year grew some frizzle gladiolas and I sourced those from my buddy Jake. He's the wholesaler that I go through. Jake hooked me up with the frizzle and guys i'm so excited to tell you that coming this spring i'm going to do a, a collaboration with jake again like i did with the tulips and we are going to offer the frizzle gladiolas for sale this spring at those great wholesale prices let me show you the frizzle that i have blooming so there are many 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 different colors of frizzle the first one to bloom for me is the red check these out. I will post a close-up photo, but it's so beautifully frizzly and so unique and so beautiful. And like I said, they come in different colors. Stay tuned. This spring, probably February, we'll be doing uh, a sale on these so you guys can get your hands on some of these corms. Oh my goodness, they're beautiful. And there were people, I posted a picture on my socials and people were saying, I normally don't like a red bloom but these are just special this is the first of the frizzles i will definitely there's another one but check this one out i'm not sure what the name of this one is this one's firecracker but this one is something different i don't know what the name of that one is but that is glorious the chartreuse and the coral color combined oh yeah those are beautiful as the frizzles open up i'll share them with you guys but this is the first frizzle to open and uh it's fantastic we have gladiolas Oh, I'm so nervous to crush them. I have another bucket of glads on the table. I'm gonna add this to that bucket so it's easier. And we also have a bucket of sunflowers. These are mostly Proca orange. I do have some white light. Nope, they're white night sunflowers with the dark centers. Over here, more Rubecchia, but check this one out. This one is called the Chim Chimney. Chim Chimney. Chim Chim Chiru. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the fluted petals and the just, just odd, they're odd and they're, they're interesting to look at. Okay. My papers are gonna fly here. I gotta put another stapler on it. Okay, good. And in the back corner, we have more sunflowers. This is called Double Quick Sunflower. That is mostly what's in that bucket with a couple of white nights as well. This is the Gamfrina, Gamfrina. We have so many, we have strawberry fields. We have, uh, what is the orange one called? I think it's just called orange. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, there's an orange Gamfrina and then we have Carmine. There are other ones down there, but I haven't harvested them yet because we're doing a bouquet bar tomorrow. We'll be harvesting tomorrow morning hard on the Gamfrina for the bouquet bar because they are a popular Adam, Adam? Item to add on, Adam. Over here, we have the first of the status. Status is one of my very favorite things to grow and use in bouquets. I have two favorites. They're all beautiful, and this obviously is um, Adoratum. Two favorites. The white is my favorite because it goes with everything. And then the apricot, which is this stem right here. The apricot is also one of my favorites because it too goes with anything. You can put it in a yellow bouquet, you can put it in a blue bouquet, purple bouquet, pink bouquet, and it goes with everything. And that's where I find the pink to be limited. Uh, I love the pink and it's gorgeous, but it doesn't go with everything. Sometimes I'll add it to a bouquet and say, nope, that color just doesn't match. So the white and the apricot are my favorites to, to use 
but they're all very beautiful. And I also have a blue indigo purple status. Not, not gonna lie, those are behind. And I'm frustrated because I have a wedding to supply flowers to in about a week and a half, and one, there are only two flowers that they want, sunflowers and blue status. And the blue status is way far behind, so I might actually have to order some blue status in. And it is, it's, it's called blue status, it looks a little purple, but there are stems that are more of a blue. I might need to order some because I'm starting to panic. They're starting to throw stems, but they're so far behind. And my friends who also grow blue status locally also say every one of theirs is blooming except the blue. Must be something. I have a second bucket of Ageratum. It's the perfect filler. And then we have more Lysianthus. Beautiful, beautiful Lysianthus. Check out this, this Roseanne green. I can't even. It looks cream, but I'm telling you, it's a, it's a green. It is green. And then on the other side of this bucket, I have my new favorite. It's a Sweet William and it's the Amazon series. They're growing so tall for me and look at the size of this bloom. And there, guys, I have hundreds of these. Look at the size of that. It's the size of a baseball. It's huge and one or two of these in a bouquet and my bouquets are massive and customers are loving it. Plus this color with some flowers, mm, it's delicious. Oh, I have some of the first lavender. There's the misty blue Lysianthus, but then there's the lavender too. Mm. But wait, there's more. We have Mrs. Burns Citrus Lemon Basil and Cinnamon Basil. Mm. And look who's back. Back again. My second sowing of Feverfew is back. And I have single Feverfew, like magic single, I think. And then I have some Vegmo, which is a double. <sighs> I have more, lots of more of this too. And I also have a bucket here with another flush of zinnias. Still not getting many zinnias, guys. It's very frustrating. And then I also, I'm starting to cut the scabiosa. So mostly white. And then there are a couple, oh, this lavender one is, is magic, the scabiosa. I literally, this is just one stem. And then there's a couple pink ones that are beautiful too. These are the, there's a few more pink ones, but that's the pink color of the scabiosa. Horrible name. Pincushion flower is, I guess, another name for it. Right here, it's a little dangerous to be carrying it around, uh, but those are the white lilies. None of them are really open. Well, oh, look, that one's got butter yellow in the middle. So the outside petals are white and they're all about to open, which is exactly how I want them when I send them off to my members. Okay, so let's get started. I have, today I have 13 bouquets to make. I am gonna grab, oh, nope, I have a drink. You know what I forgot? I forgot the buckets to put my bouquets in after I've made them. I must retrieve some. I'll be right back. Okay, I have two buckets. I'll start with a white lily. Well, I guess a white and yellow lily. That really is beautiful. Hmm. But there are more to come, right? More to come, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and frizzle this up with red. So I'll do one, two, And then I also have a couple of red zins. Ooh yeah, okay. I'm gonna basil it up, one on each side. What else do I have here? Ooh hoo hoo hoo! Adding a double quick. So it's basically a red, yellow, and kind of a cream look. And I'm definitely gonna accentuate that with the Strawberry Fields Gumfrina and the Cream Lysianthus. And of course the Fever View. I'm gonna put a couple sprigs of that in right now. Oh gosh, it just dances. It's one of my favorites. Oh wow. Look at that. That's one. One stem, one stem, and it just dances in the bouquet. Okay, Gumfrina. 
one, two, and a three. Add a couple of beautiful sunflowers. One there, and one here. This is how I like to put the sunflowers in my customers' bouquets because they are going to be able to watch it. Um, so, so far, that's what we have. And we have these gorgeous, I believe it's to be ABC yellow. And I'm gonna put one on each side and that is a beautiful, beautiful bouquet. I honestly, I kinda wanna put a white status in it, but it's already really loaded. I'm doing it. Okay, so a white status over here. <gasps> All right, that is that. Oh yeah, that zinnia is lost. Let me see, let me pull it up. I'm gonna pull it over to the side because it was getting lost in there. Okay, let me wrap this up. At a prairie sun. Woo over here, I have a brand new bag of rubber bands because I don't know if you guys saw in my last video, I ran out and had to use them from like the dollar store and they were awful. They were breaking on me. So I use, I think size 19. Oh, these are size 32. I think 19 is the bigger ones that I was using for sunflower bundles a couple years ago. So this is a size 32 rubber band and I have a packet of flower food that I add onto that. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna snap off the top of the gladiola because it's a little flimsy on top. And over here, I have two staplers. I'm gonna point the camera down. I have two staplers because I'm always terrified that one's gonna run out and I don't, if I'm in the middle of the farmer's market or something, I don't wanna have to stop. So what I did here is I pre-folded all 13 papers so I know exactly how many I have left to do because that just makes it simpler and I don't have to constantly stop and count. So I'm gonna have the lily in the front because that's extremely delicate. So I'm folding it up and I'm just taking my stapler and stapling it at the bottom. And then again, up here, right underneath the lily. And these are 18 by 18 inch pieces of paper. Uh, and that's, that's lovely. That makes me happy. The yellow, this color combination is one of my favorites. I will never get sick of it. And there she is. I'm gonna grab you and you and then one that's not so opened you I think I'm gravitating towards the dark purples right now the gladiolas anyway I have you know what this is my first year that I'm able to sell this dark purple because the thrips are not touching them in years past the darker colors show the most thrip damage um, but i'm able to sell these because there's no striping from the thrips so this top leaf right here on the sunflower i'm gonna go ahead and trim off because it has some um, ugly leaves on it no don't take offense you're still beautiful but your leaves are a little ugly so i'm gonna trim those off i'm gonna put the dark purple and i have another dark purple glad this one's actually open hello Okay, obviously things are better in threes, but I don't have, I want everyone to get gladiolas today and I don't have enough to give everyone three. Maybe next week because I have about 1,500 more gladiolas on the way. I'm gonna add this lilac zinnia. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna do the citrus basil on this one. And let's grab a, a lily. This one is a white rose lily that'll open up and be super double flowering gorgeous. I'm gonna add a couple of rubex. Gotta get those in there. I was thinking about bringing in some of the pink, but maybe I'll just leave this one purple. So if I just do purple, I'm going to add a lot of the ageratum around the base because that's a beautiful purple pop. Okay, I've added about four stems of ageratum around the base. Get one, one more sunflower, it's gotta go. I have actually a beautiful 
purple status. So I have this beautiful purple status that I'll add to that baby. And then obviously we'll add some fever few because hello, white goes with everything. Uh-huh. That, that's gorgeous. Let's see, what else can we, the Lysianthus, I can't forget about that. This is one of the first stems of the lavender Lysianthus and I love that it has a dark center. So that's going, I'm gonna put it right in front cause I want that to be um, showcased when I wrap it up. Speaking of wrapping it up, let's wrap it up. I think this one's good. Okay, I want that Lizzie in the front. This sunflower leaf is a little bit obtuse. I love you. I'm pretty much dying to work with that sweet William, so let's bring in some pinks. This one. Yes, look at these gloves. Oh, my papers, my papers. I forgot to replace the stapler. Oh, look at these, that's gorgeous. Taking these two, I'm gonna add a pink Zin because she, wait, does she or she belong better? This one, yes she does. I'm gonna do white sunflowers with this one. I'm feeling that speaking to me okay I'm loving the white sunflowers and I'm gonna make this a lily free bouquet so this one's not gonna have any lilies because I do have some customers who have cats who have asked specifically not for lilies so I'm gonna grab a sprig of my pink status the like, status is so amazing. It just, this pink doesn't go well. It doesn't go well. I think I might use white status. Oh wait, this is a lighter pink. No, nope, I'm gonna use the white status. I'm using the white status. This is what I mean by that. The pink, to me, it just doesn't mesh well. It doesn't play well with others. Okay, so far we have pink and white. I'm gonna grab white Lysianthus and Sweet William. Okay. That is what just a little bit of Sweet William does to a bouquet. I love it. All right, what else? Can't forget the basil. And then I think a little bit of fever few will go a long way on this one. On everyone, really. And then a couple of sprigs of pink gomfrina, which is actually, it's the carmine gomfrina, which is it's pink with a little dot of white on top. It's so cute. I have hundreds of them, hundreds. I'm gonna bring in a, another zinnia as well. Pinks and whites and pinks and whites. I really like the way this looks. It, it bothers me a little bit that the white of the Lysianthus and the white of the white sunflower are a little bit different, but I think bringing in the zinnia and then the status and the fever few, I think everything blends together and someone's gonna love it. Next, start with the sunflowers. One, two, strip these big old leaves off of here. Oh, why? Why? Boo. Dark and mysterious is the name of this one. I want some chim chimneys. We're going fall. We're going fall with this. Okay, we got chim chimneys and we have some dark glads. Let's get those. This one. Do I have another? I do indeed. Oh. <laughs> Oh yes, you're lovely. We have the chim chimneys, the rubecchias, and then these beautiful burgundy gladiolas that will open up to be so amazing. And speaking of amazing, <gasps> look at you, look at you, look at you. Perfect. 
I'm gonna go with the dark cinnamon basil. No lily, this is a lily free. <clears throat> lily free. I don't even think I want you, fever few. Oh, oh, the sweet William is so sweet. I love that it draws the dark out when it's surrounded by darks and it draws the brighter pink of it when it's surrounded by whites. So this doesn't feel bright to me, but in this one, it feels bright to me. It's amazing. I don't know, we might need to pop some white in here. Oh, goodness gracious, this is amazing. Let me see what just a little sprig. No. Adding these pops of pink. I wish I, I don't think I have a yellow status. If I had a yellow status, it would be um, perfect in here. Don't you be sad. Sometimes if there's a sad Rebecca, and that's not too sad, that's just a top heavy. Um, I will change its location because if it's in the middle and has other petals supporting it, which one is it? Right here. Then it's landing on top of everyone else and it's not gonna sag in the base. Okay, well, that's my new favorite. Fall's here. Fall's almost here, people. My UPS guy's here. It's Ron. What's he bringing me today? It's me. Um, Ron brought me flower food packets. Crystal. Okay, so let's get number five going. We've got sunflower. It's just easier to start with sunflowers and then move things around, um, in my experience anyway. And this is my experience, and I'm sharing with you, and this is what it is. So we will go with a lily for this one. Okay, oh, oh, please don't break, please, please don't break. This is how I like the lily, because I don't have to worry about it. Well, I do kind of have to worry about it breaking, but I don't have to worry about the petals, the openness of them, and them being delicate. Okay, which gladiola do I want? Let's use this one. This is one of the frizzles that's open more, guys. Look at this. Oof, so I'm gonna actually put this one in and then a couple more that are a little bit on the closed side. This one, yes, okay, perfect. I love this Rubecchia because it has the green center, so it's something a little bit different than what you normally see in a Rubecchia. Okay, and this actually goes really well. That zinnia there, and there's a second one that's that same color, so I'm gonna pull that in. Give some basil to the book. The book needs basil. Book, it's my new word for bouquet. Does pink go with this one? No, the pink doesn't, no pink, no pink. Does the white status go with this one? It does. How about peach? Does the peach status go with, it does. I'm gonna go with the white, the white. Bringing in some strawberry fields to round out the red. She's a beaut. And then some fever few because it's so pretty. It makes me so happy. Another Rebecca. And then Lysianthus. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck it down in top. Oh wow. One more sprig of Lizzie, and that's that's a sunshiny day. And then this ABC yellow. Oh wow. Okay. Make me happy. It makes me happy. Somebody else will be happy. Cutting it up. It's like peachy, coral, red, green, white, yellow. <laughs> Everything but pink. Okay, so I actually am running out of, I ran out of room in my buckets. I can only fit two in a bucket when they're this size and they're gorgeous. Let me get more buckets. I've been wanting to use these, these other frilly ones. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and use these in this bouquet. They're just so delicate and romantic looking. I honestly don't love them with the sunflowers. 
I don't. So let's do a bouquet without these sunflowers. Let's see if I like them with the white. Oh yes, I do. Indeed I do. Okay, yeah, that, that makes me, that thrills me to be honest. And oops, sorry. I have this peachy coral, yup. Mm -hmm. And I have this peachy coral one, so that's going in. Beautiful white one, that's going in. <laughs> Fever few, fever few. Mm -hmm. Basil. Cheese Louise, this one's. <laughs> this is where I'm using the peach status because it's a requirement for this bouquet. Actually, I can't make it without it, so. It's dancing in there. Some green lysianthus. <gasps> oh gosh. Oh, wow. Another. And another. <laughs> okay. And then something else. There's nothing else. Yes. Indeed. Okay, so this bouquet doesn't have lilies and I'm not putting gumfrina and I'm not putting other things but I am rounding it out with three more of those okay these colors I gotta top take the top off And remember, like that's what the gladiola looks like. So, woohoo! Moving on up, Van. Two, three. I'm gonna go with some chim chims. What color gladiolas? You know what? I have these beautiful purple ones. I'll use these. That's how you follow up. <laughs> That's it, right there. That's how you follow up a chartreuse peach apricot. You follow it up with pops of purple and definitely, definitely pops of color in this one. I added the white lysianthus and the sweet William and the pink gonfrina. And I'm looking at this pink right here. Can this pink go with this bouquet? Yes. The pink status can go with this bouquet. Book. She needs basil. Look at the book. Well, if she just doesn't scream. Pinks and purples and whites and yellows. It's lovely. Who's next? Basil. Gotta harvest more basil for um, tomorrow because I'm hosting the bouquet bar, the book bar. Book. I go with the coral blads for this one. I just added some coral zins. We'll do some coral glads. And I think we'll do some scabiosa. I harvest scabiosa when you can still see the green on top for the longest face life. I also think it adds interest and texture. Also gonna add some fever few. This is the Vegmo fever few. There's a bug in my eye. Okay, we're good. Um, this stem looks a little bit brown to me on top, unfortunately. So I'm not gonna use that one because I don't want it to turn brown prematurely in the vase. It looks like it's just been pollinated. And when, when things are pollinated, um, they start to die. It just looked like it had been pollinated. So I am going to add a lily to this right down the center. So the lily will open up and be kind of um, prime real estate on top. Beauteous. She needs Lizzie's. 
It's funny because I feel like this Gumfrina goes with everything, but the pink status does not. Maybe I'm being too judgy. Maybe I'm being too harsh on her. Maybe I should give her more credit. That is a queen lime. That's going in here. That is a wonderful combination. I shall chop off her legs now. Another lovely. I have another dark set of glads. Ooh, I have more reds too. I'm sorry, but I'm just drawn to the reds. I'm drawn, drawn, drawn to them. So reds and suns. I really should use my trimmers because if I don't, sometimes I pop the heads off and it turns into a flower horror show. <gasps> it's been decapitated. Are you kidding me? Oops. That was not intentional. I went to go chop off the leaf on top. Chopped that off. Okay. The yellow zins deserve a loving place to call home. This is where I'm bringing in the orange gamfrina. Yes. Yes. It's also so good. Bring in the basil. Lysianthus. You know what? I didn't use a lot of the purple Lysianthus. No. The papers. No. The white Lysianthus is perfect. I'm going to bring in some Feverfew as well. Make that white pop all over. And a couple of chim chimneys. That's going to be great. So interesting looking. You know what? I kind of like the pops of purple around this. Just a couple of these. Um, yep. Oh yes. That is like a fruit salad. Delicious. And nutritious. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, I did not notice this one before. I knew it was green, but look at the throat. That is cool. And I do not know this variety. All I know is that it came from Nagel's. Wow. Okay, let's use it. Oh, who's coming with me? I don't think I have another one of those glads. So I'm gonna grab one of, oh, look at those two together. The green and then the frizzle with the chartreuse underneath. Hello. Ooh, and you can come. I um, kinda got a little bit of a theme going on with these coral colors and you can come. Okay, and also these scabiosas can come because they are glorious. I want some fever few. Brad's here. Hi, Brad. I'm gonna pull in some hot pink with this one too. <gasps> Why didn't I do this before? Hot pink coral. Um, yes, please. That's a winning combination. Who else? Who else? We got Mother Gomph. Mother Gomph coming in hot. Gomph, Gomph, Gomph. We already have Fever Few. We need the Lizzie's. We're doing white Lizzie's. Yep. And. White status. What I like about status too is that it usually will have long enough lower branches to tuck it up underneath and still use the central piece. That one not so much, but the other one. So I was able to tuck a piece under here and then the rest over here. Who else? Brad, I have decapitated not one, but two sunflowers. Two. I can actually see you lying down on the couch back there. Wave to the camera. Thank you. 
<laughs> okay. So that white sunflower is in there as well. And over here, grab another white one, put it on this side. <gasps> okay. Uh, basil. Can't, can't forget about basil. It just mm, fills the air. All right. Cutting it up. Three more. Three more. Let's go with the purple glads. Yellow suns. Some rubes. Purple lysianthus, haven't used that yet. That would be good. Yup. More technically, it's misty blue. And then some of this ageratum. Ooh, it's getting windy. Yes, this is wonderful. I'm loving this combination. Yes, this is for a purple lover, and I know there are a lot out there. I have a lot of customers who tell me that purple is their favorite color. It's one of mine, for sure. And let's see. Actually, the pink status does look nice with this one. So I'm going to add a sprig of pink status. And I'm also going to add some feverfew. As I have been doing to nearly every book. Lovely. Let's see, what do we have for zinnias that would look nice? This white one. A sprig of basil. Huh? I don't know, there's someone pulled over on the side of the road. Sometimes they do that, I try to ignore them. Private property. And this lovely lily will open up and be marvelous. Indeed. Okay. That's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. That, that zinnia makes it better. Hello. Let's move it over here. Yep. Okay, two more. Going in the back here for some nice big open suns and some that are just opening. Let's see. We've got Another more purple. I like it since I do have those purple lysianthus to use. Yes, yes, and the azuratum. Here's that, ooh, you know what? I'm gonna use the cinnamon basil. Mmm, that smells so good. And then I have this beautiful magenta looking zinnia. Look at this zinnia. Gumfrina is um, super tall this year. Just have to make sure you harvest it in the right spot. That's lovely. I have a ton more fever few I've gotta harvest before the uh, Okay, bar tomorrow, and then whatever is left. Well, it's nice. So whatever's left here today is gonna to go back in the cooler, except the zinnia and the basil, because that doesn't go in the cooler because it doesn't like cold temperatures. But it'll go back in the cooler and I'll bring it out tomorrow for the bouquet bar in the afternoon, and I'll freshly cut some more stuff in the morning as well. And then whatever is left over from the bouquet bar, I'll bring to the farmer's market the next day. So uh, I just have so many flowers right now. I knew uh, between the CSA, and the farmer's market, I was still gonna have a lot, especially the Sweet William. I have so much of that. I have another two buckets of that and the Ageratum and the Gunfrina and the Feverfew. There's just a lot right now. So I wanna just be able to sell as much as I can and not let anything go to waste. This one is such a value, like such a value. I'm looking at it going, wow, I can't imagine. I mean, this is my $20 CSA bouquet. That's gorgeous. This, I can't say it's my favorite because they all are. <laughs> one more, last one. 
this, it, hello, camera, thank you. It's supposed to automatically change with the sun. Sometimes it takes a while. So this is a little bit of darker pink, but this is a light frilly pink and she's beautiful. So I am gonna go ahead, no. This one has a little bit of bug damage. You have to pay attention. It's not a thrip damage or anything like that, but something chewed the side of it. I'm guessing it was a grasshopper. So because it's only the one petal, you can pull it off, um, but then it kind of leaves a little bit of a gap. So I have other ones, so I'm gonna put this one back and grab a different one for the customer. I'm gonna grab a dark purple one. Oh yeah, so it's, hello, ca camera, catch up, catch up, camera, hello. So it's gonna be a dark and a light vibe, and look at that. I've got something to go with it. I've got that, and I've got a, another one, and I've got basil, and fever few. You know what, I like to put the fever few in after I have something to put it around, so. Let's go to the suns. Rubex. Chim chimini. Carmine all over the place. Pops of fever few. This is why I like to add it after so I can kind of tuck it in usually two to three different spots around the bouquet. I already got basil, so let's get some lisianthus in here. I have two lisianthus left, which is perfect because this is my last bouquet for my CSA. So I've got a beautiful cream one and then a beautiful misty blue one. There's actually more to harvest when it comes to lisianthus as well down there. So I'm gonna add a couple more sprigs of beauty. I'm gonna actually add this queen lime as well. I just love the queen lime one so much. There, that's just, mm with it right next to the sunflower. And then maybe a sprig of, you know what? The pink status works with this one. So this is an example of pink status looking fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a sprig of pink status. I actually have two sprigs. I'm gonna add both. Ugh, I love status so much. What else? Who's missing? I'm gonna put a little bit of, you know what? Let's go crazy. Check this Sweet William out. So this Sweet William is multiple colors and I think it's just what this book needs. Wrap it up. This is awesome. I really love that. I am definitely growing more of this Sweet William Dianthus next year. This, unfortunately, is not perennial for me. It's a zone six, I'm a zone four. So this one, unfortunately, isn't going to be coming back for me, but it is fairly easy to grow from seed. I'm really happy and so prolific. I'm probably seven or eight at least stems off of every plant. So that's something I will be definitely growing again next year because next year I am reducing um, my quantities, I guess, not quantities of flowers themselves, but varieties, because I'm not gonna be able to manage both the farm and the nursery at the level that I'm doing. So I'm hoping to grow fewer varieties, still a lot, there's still gonna be a lot, but not 150 varieties. So that way I can better manage the plants that I am growing, including Sweet William. Anyway, thanks for sticking around guys, we'll see you soon. I've gotta deliver these bouquets and I gotta hit the road, so. Bye. Don't you fly on me, paper Tina. That's something special. Got a book. Mm -hmm. A final countdown. Oh, it's a final countdown. <laughs> really? That's hysterical. <laughs> Babe, my hair's blowing in the wind when I said it's the last one, so I was able to, like, it's the final countdown. Remember that commercial where his hair's blowing in the wind? Anyway, what is this? Boop. 